All right, y'all. So I know y'all clicked on this message. Like, what the heck is Chris about to talk about? Now, it's going to take me a little while to, you know, get this all out. But y'all be patient with me. Yes, I was a part of witchcraft. I was a witch and did not even know it, okay? And I'm not talking about nobody else's story. I'm talking about my own. So in order to get to where we going, we going to get to where it started at, all right? Now, most of y'all know that I'm from Liberty City. And some of y'all don't know what Liberty City is, okay? Liberty City is a place in Miami that's on the other side of the bridge. This ain't South Beach. Nah, this is a place that's full of poverty, all right? This ain't no place that we just with palm trees. Matter of fact, you don't even barely see no palm trees or grass, all right? It ain't all of that where I'm from. But I'm from there, okay? And when you come from a place where it's not so great, you're always determined to be better. There's a determination to be better, to have more than what you got. To live in something better than what you done been brought up in and i would say the example of that were the women that were around me who were members of delta sigma theta sorority incorporated these were those type of women okay now if you wanted to be somebody them girls who had them cars who had great education who were well spoken you were one of them or you really want nobody at all. So here I come. I'm like, shoo, I'm with it then. If that's what I got to do to be greater, I'm going to do that. I want to be, you know, joining forces with people who are going to help me further where I want to be and also do great for the black community. I'm about this. And I feel like my, my history with Delta dates back to being a Delta gym, even in high school. So I didn't just become, you know, a Delta when I got to college. I was in pursuit of this thing from my youth. I was a Delta Gym. I had mentors. I was president of the Delta Gym chapter that I was in. And we continued in this and we did great things. And I felt like these women did great things for me. I would love and be honored to pay it forward and be their sister. I, I want to join those ranks of these people. Those them people. And I'm trying to get from around where I'm at. I'm trying to go higher. I'm trying to take it to the next level if you understand what I mean. So leaving high school... I mean, God's always been good. Pursuit of education, excellent. 5.6 GPA leaving, get a full ride to where I'm going, boom, be able to interview. I get the Delta Scholarship. From the Delta Scholarship, they recommend me for the National Panhellenic Scholarship down here. I got it. Boom. We, we going. Now we pursuing things. We're getting better. We finally beginning to climb. We making it, y'all. We get, coming up out of Liberty City. All right. Get accepted to the college that I want to go to and now all things are aligning get the college now it's coming time for that time now the thing that I'm wanting is that time now it's coming all right I'm making the calls I got to make I'm getting things aligned because this is what I've been in pursuit of 3.9 GPA now that you you know in college you finally got everything you've been doing you've been doing scholarship you've been doing service you're ready for it finally pursue it get invited to it this the moment I've been waiting for. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Ain't nobody finna hold me back. I'm down at the Wells Fargo get my cashier's check. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. I'm in this thing, y'all. I got mine. Let me go. And I felt like all along I was so excited because I was getting ready to do something that, you know, folks in my family hadn't done. I'm getting ready to take it to another level because if you're a part of them, you have no other choice but to be great. Excellence was the standard, and that's what drew me to them. I love things done in the spirit of excellence, even from my youth, and this drew me. So now, how did you become a witch and not know it, Chris? I'm getting there. Be patient, dear. Be patient. I'm getting there. So as all of this is happening and going on, I didn't know that while in pursuit of a higher level education, that I would begin to practice in a higher level magic of witchcraft that I was unaware of. This is the pursuit thereof. This is the journey to it. So now I'm getting into this organization and it's time to get down. It's time to commit. And I understand that this is going to be everything that I didn't know it was going to be, but you just go for it. As each day goes by, you just go for it. Now back in track, I already told y'all, I never had a problem, you know, academically, not a problem at all, superseded, did well in anything that I did. But now I get here to this point and I'm online and now I can't remember anything. Now my mind is under attack and I didn't realize it at that moment. I did not. This comes really after reflecting. After I got out, I realized now what was happening to me. All right. I'm online. I can't remember anything. 
they're figuring well can somebody deal with her so y'all can help her remember too because i don't understand what's going on neither did i neither did i first attack on the mind witchcraft deals very differently from each individual you don't know how it's going to attack you i was dealing in a level of witchcraft that my body was never supposed to experience but nonetheless i did telling y'all as well that even while it was, i was in pursuit i was fasting and praying to god thinking he was really gonna hear me because i was I, I guess i thought that i could serve two masters nonetheless we're continuing in this process now as this process continues to go my mind's already been under attack but at the same time now i get a phone from home a phone call from home my family member telling me i need to come back home because my identity has been stolen so i didn't understand back then as above so below as my identity was being traded and stolen and given over even willfully by my own free will I didn't understand that this was happening to me too in the natural. And if you don't believe that God be sending you signs through what you going through, you need to stop and reflect because I was being sent all the signs. Nonetheless, I was blinded. I was blinded by the lust and desires of my own heart. I don't care if this is leading me to a road of destruction at that time. I'm going for it. I said I would commit to it and I'm going to see it through. That's what I was doing. So I get to the point where I'm at one of the first types of things what we need to undergo ceremonially i get there and we all here you know we doing what it is that we have to do but now it comes to a point where i got the bow and if i ain't take nothing from my pentecostal upbringing i'm like listen you know what thou shall have no other god before me thou shall not bow to any other god i knew that now i knew that but i as soon as we got up out of there i'm finna dock it i got to call my mentor hey nah Y'all ain't tell me nothing about that, but now I just got up out of that. What what was that all about? Can you enlighten me to what just happened? Because I don't know what just happened, but I know we was all there, and that's what we did. Well, you know, not to worry. It's just like with African traditions. It's ceremonially no different than the rites of passage. I'm like, all right, if that's what you got to do, I don't know. It don't feel right, but I'm going through with it anyway. All right, so I'm, I done went through with that things continue to progress and i've continued I've, I've gone through with everything now as i look back at the situation we're going to talk about how i got out but i look back at the situation there were several things happening all at once i was ceremonially participating in witchcraft okay um i was a part of something that i really didn't fully understand and i was it was deceptive because one of the terms used is that this is a christian based organization in which all the principles would be based upon what Christians do. However, it's adulterated because there is a patron of the organization which stands in proxy of Satan. Now, I'm not here to tell anybody. Grown people, let grown people do what they want to do, okay? Every grown person, please do what it is that you want to do. I'm not responsible for you like you're not responsible for me. I will not sit in the comment section and debate with you. Live your life. I'm a live and let live. This is talking about my story, my transition. And if anybody finds hope, finds inspiration from this to do what it is that God has probably already been provoking your spirit to do, do that. Now let's switch over to when someone who's a loved and trusted source came to me about seven years ago, okay? Asking this one simple question, have you ever thought that what you're a part of, you might be serving another God? Why she asked that? Because I snapped. No, absolutely not. No. Because everybody know, honey, I, I love God. I love Jesus. And this is what it is. And we do great things for the community. And furthermore, you're not one of us. You're not even Greek. You don't even understand the inner workings of what happens here. So no, <laughs> no, I've never thought that. And I'm never going to think that. Thank you. I snapped, eating her head off. I wasn't in a place to even have a conversation, to have my thoughts, ideas, and beliefs about what I was a part of challenged. I wasn't in the space to do that. Now, fast forward, it takes maybe about four years later that she comes to me. In between, I've already been in pursuit of God for myself. I've already disconnected from a lot of things and people that I was connected to. I needed to see God because my life was so upside down. I needed to figure out where I went wrong on this journey. Now, you talking to somebody who has pursued excellence, who has exceedingly done well in everything I've did. Now, how do I end up here? 
What the heck is going on with my life, God? I got to figure this situation out. So I would like to think this was my road to Damascus type of experience. I'm down at the building and coding building about to, you know, get some permits pulled for a project that I was working on. And this beloved source to me comes and says, listen, I just, I just want you to take these earphones. I want you to hear what this girl has to say, you know, listen to her. Just listen to it all the way through. Just please, for me, would you listen? And I was at a point in my life where I could listen. I didn't know what I was about to listen to. But when I listened to it, it was a young woman. This video is from like 95, 1997. This young woman literally said, you know, she was a member of Zeta Phi Beta, Sorority Incorporated. She had crossed through FIU, Florida National University. And there were some things that on her spiritual journey, she was enlightened about. And as she began to speak about her journey, she asked a question. If this is all Christian based, then why would we need a patron to be the forefront of an organization? And I said, hmm, why would we? Why does any of the Divine Nine, why does any other organization, Eastern Star, Masonry, why does any organization need that? If this is unto the one and true living God, then it is really not necessary. Two, why does there have to be so many rituals when we should serve God in spirit and in truth? Hmm. Why do we need all of that stuff? I, I, I didn't know. When I finished that video listening to that young woman, I said, I want out. I want out and I want out immediately because the feeling that came over me was the feeling of deception. I hate to be lied to. I do not like to be lied to. When you've given your life over literally to a situation, and some of you may be able to understand that with uh, a significant other and then you're lied to about something that you were involved in in my situation I was leading a life that I didn't fully understand I was on a double standard I'm serving two gods I'm leaving church to go to chapter I'm serving two gods I am kneeling before a different god and I just felt so disgusted in my spirit that nobody told me this how could I be a part of this did the people who brought me in did they know what how did I end up here? So after that happened, I said, I got to be able to get to my books. I need to get to my books to understand this. I don't know what I'm a part of right now, but I am devoted. I'm, I'm going to stay up. I will read this stuff from front to back and back to front to figure out what I'm a part of. Now, I came to a point in a passage of something that you're given earlier on. And in that book, it said, you have now entered into a struggle from which you would never be freed. I was shook. I was shook. Hold on. Entering into a struggle from which I would never be freed. Now, I knew that this was for a lifetime, but I didn't know what we were serving for that lifetime because it was masked. Now, you put a patron there. But then people would argue that the patron is in what we serve. Well, why I got to be there? Why when we sing songs, you know, we say this patron's name. We say Minerva. Now, if I'm serving God, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ. No, Heavenly Father is just too vague for me. Who are we talking to? I felt some type of way, okay? Now, after getting this stuff together, I would say that it was as much as a struggle that I had to get into Delta in order to get out of Delta. It was a struggle. I had, write your letter, follow up every day. It took six to eight weeks, probably even longer if I can think about it because I've been out for years now. But just as much as I would call daily or follow the rules that I needed to follow in order to get down, I had to do that in order to get out. When I look back at my journey and what that journey was like while I was in that organization, I was deceived. <laughs> you know, I just didn't know. And I know that that spirit can fall under anybody. That's why I'm not, I'm not there to judge anybody. Again, grown people, let grown people do what they want to do. If you find the need that this is a video of substance that leads you to do your own research, then do it. If you figure that this video is trash and garbage, keep scrolling. This is not for you, but I'm simply telling my journey because the girl from Liberty City was in pursuit of greater. I didn't understand that everything I needed was already inside of me. I left my position as the e elect, okay? The light, the children of the light to join something that was called the elite, okay? 
I joined the elite, but I left my ultimate position of the elect. I think about our last, our last going over, which is a probate show. Now, if we look at the natural, right? And if we're looking at this natural thing, a probate show and then an improbate court. Now, what in probate court happened? It's a legal process to make sure that the last will and testament of the deceased member is carried out. Probate show, probate court. There was something that was happening in the spirit realm that I did not know back then. There was a selling out of the birthright. And if you don't think birthrights are real, I want you to go read about Jacob and Esau. He sold his for a bowl of porridge. As a descendant of Jacob, I do believe that Satan wanted that birthright back. So it came masked, you know, through all of these things that the heart, which is desperately wicked, was in pursuit of. I wanted more. I was in pursuit of more. I deserve more. I am this. I deserve more. I, I deserve to be amongst the elite. I deserve to be the head and not the tail. Let's go. I want more and I'm going to do this with a group of people who get it, you know, because everybody around us just don't get it. And that's what I felt. But later on, I was left deceived. And there is a terrible feeling to be deceived. When getting out, and I dropped a video about a year ago telling you that there's no feeling like being free to provoke you all to denounce anything that is not of God and is keeping you from divine destiny. This is that season. You know, things are timely. Things are so timely. You've got to understand that these people have an artificial light, okay? They tell you that the intelligence is the torch of wisdom. But I'd like to refer you back to the Bible, which states to us that the beginning, the, the beginning of, of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. You can't have that. You know, you, they want you to be torchbearers, but I want you to then do your research about what's going to happen to these torchbearers. What's the, what's the end result for people? So most of us are familiar when it says, what does it profit a man to gain this whole world, but to lose his soul? What would it profit you? You got everything here, but your soul is in eternal damnation. And as I begin to do my research, crossing the burning sands, listen, hold up. That sounds like, you know, Moses and the people of Israel, when they came over and you know, God parted the Red Sea. For them to walk over on dry land and then he washed up everybody that it was in pursuit of them now if we talk about a sea and then a lake of fire i'm crossing the burning sands now i've left my position of a child of the light to enter into the darkness i don't want to go to hell hell is too hot i don't want to be tormented i i was a, i was really a part of this i was die hard i practiced my oops I practiced in this stuff. I went to other campuses and with other chapters. I want to know how this song should be sang. No, I don't want to sing it the way we've been doing it. I want it to be right according to the musically composition of how this was supposed to be. I want this table to be right. The ambience, the lighting, the this, the that. I wanted things to be right because perfect practice was going to usher in the spirit perfectly. I was in witchcraft. Now, I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm talking about me. I walked around with a ritual book. This is me. Now, what do witches do? Practice witchcraft. Perform rituals. That's what I did. Some people won't keep it funky with you about what they do and they glamorize it. And to the outside looking in, it does look golden. The splendor looks golden. But they've already told you that everything that glitters is not gold. The experience was one that I could not fathom. I, this was everything that I didn't know was about to happen. And this really flipped my world upside down. So as a person who's now out, where I've gained my freedom, got my papers after however long, after being told that if you denounce this, you could never pursue membership again in this organization. Well, to God be the glory. I am after my birthright. I want everything back that the enemy has stolen from me. Satan's agenda is to steal, kill, and destroy. Something was stolen from a great many people of you who are even inside of these organizations. And the one thing that I want you to know, the elite will pursue you when you are the elect of God. 
the elect of God know that they are destined for better. And sometimes we get tired of being at the bottom, but you can't go over there. You are the light that folks are trying to emulate. That's an artificial light. Only the light of God will be standing forever. If you want to be free, some people love slavery. Some people will never understand a free man's train of thought. Fine, stay in that struggle. Keep in mind, you entered into a struggle from which you would never be freed. And at the end of the day, there's a final rites of passage where your soul is then committed. You can't tell me about that. I know I was in it. I attended those. I was there. Nobody can tell you when you've been in it, when you've lived it, when you've performed it, when you've bought other lines of women in. I had over 50 women on the campus of the University of Florida express their interest in the organization. Many said, I never knew what this was until I met you, but I met you and I wanna be your sister. I wanna be a part of something like that. Listen, baby, if you watching today and you express something to me and you later went over, my apologies. I was deceived. I do apologize to you. Again, it's an opportunity. If you follow me in, you can follow me out. You too can gain your birthright. I apologize of being a bad example before you. I was in pursuit of something. This is straight humility talking to you. I apologize. If I led you down a road of destruction, my sincerest apologies to you. I didn't know. I was unaware. I was only doing what I thought would lead me to a better road in my life. I didn't know that I was trading over my birthright. I didn't know I was trading over my position. So you guys can do with this video exactly what you please. I wanna let this be known that I am not afraid of the powers that be. I serve the one and true living God and he's already ordered divine protection. If any one of those of you who are in and wanna come out, you've got questions about that, feel free to hit me up. Nonetheless, nonetheless, if that's where you wanna be, if you enjoy what you do, God, God bless you, keep you. Do whatever it is that you want to do. But now that you've heard the word, you are accountable. I don't have to work out your soul salvation. You do. I'm not accountable for you. You are. Love you much.